My name is Josh Massey, and I'm the author of The Plotline Bomber of Innisfree. Well, in terms of uh, the life I was leading, I drifted out west in a typical fashion. I ended up in northern BC, and I was doing um, various work uh, related to um, resources, uh, environmental end of things too. So I ended up working on the Peace River for a while, doing some environmental surveys for the proposed dam that was going there. And I was working in the woods as a silviculture surveyor, where there's a lot of farming land mixed with sort of for various forest types. And uh, it was a place where there were a lot of demands on the land. And I found myself kind of in the middle of um, a conflict between industry and landowners. And sometimes it was a conflict, sometimes it wasn't, but it really opened my eyes to um, what's going on out, out there in terms of uh, the power dynamics of industry and the people uh, who have a claim to the land, be they First Nations um, or all sorts of people. Well, one of the um, sort of industries I observed was various forms of farming, agriculture, and um, wild game farms, elk farms. And that was the first time I'd seen an elk farm, was probably in northeastern BC. And um, it was a curious concept, having the wilderness behind a fence. Um, so I explored elk farming as a subject for uh, my novel. And uh, the main character, Jeffrey Inkster, is an elk farmer. And uh, I found there was an interesting uh, moral dilemma that presented itself, where the elk farmer cares a lot about uh, the creatures they're rearing. And um, in the case of Jeffrey Inkster, also partakes in the harvesting of their velvet antler, uh, which is then processed into a medicinal uh, supplement and uh, sold in mass markets globally. And it's quite painful for the elk to go through the process of the velvet antler removal. So it became a question of animal rights and cruelty against animals. Um, at the same time, Jeffrey Inkster is trying to defend the land um, for his animals. So it was this interesting crux of uh, complicity combined with um, sort of nature and uh, humankind's uh, will to conquer nature. And it was just very um, fruitful to uh, use as a, a novel. There are several strands of plot that go through this, and uh, the strands are written in a different form. So uh, one plot strand is written in journalism, and it's kind of an absurdist journalism, but journalism none the, nonetheless. So that's a certain style that flows through telling a story. Then there's also a extended prose poem that courses through it, that tells another perspective of a different character. And then there's uh, some more traditional uh, prose writing that goes through that too. So I conceived of these um, as pipelines, um, which sort of link up like helixes in certain points and course through it. So then the metaphor of the plot line bomber um, is sort of uh, the plot line is the pipeline. And as I start subverting the linearity of these um, sort of uh, poetic and textu textual pipeline slash plot lines, uh, it becomes an act of uh, sort of metaphysical sabotage of sorts and uh, playing with expectations. It's kind of set in the near future in a um, partially fictional place called Enderby County. And uh, there's some back to the landers uh, who live out there, Inkster, the elk farmer being one of them. Some of them are political, some are very conservative. They live in this sort of in-between land uh, between the provinces. And uh, there's um, a lot of politics going on in terms of power dynamics between different forces. So uh, the politics of power, I guess you could say, there are various entities competing for dominion. Um, so there's industry who wants to expand uh, the wealth of uh, their extraction operations. And then there are the landowners, the farmers, who want to maintain their way of life. So they're vying for their place. And then uh, there are also um, other factors. There's the Animal uh, Rights uh, Bureau, as I call it. Um, 
so they want to see that these elk are are being taken care of properly so they and inkster butt heads and inkster and industry butt heads and then there's municipal council in town and they want to please everybody um, so they're kind of scratching everyone's backs so the politics is very much a uh, a power play over who controls the dynamic in this place called Enderby. It certainly does, again, in terms of the setting. Um, and it's very typical of today's rural communities in Canada and elsewhere, I'm sure, where uh, the locals inextricably caught up in these powerful global forces. So you have people very rooted to place who might have been there a long time, who have a special connection to a very localized place. And then you have the global economy, um, which is sort of um, drawing resources from these areas. Uh, so the global challenges the local and in some ways threatens the local. But ultimately, in that opposition, the local is strengthened. So um, I've often described it, uh, or I've conceived of it kind of as the intestines of, of the world, or I, I get the sense of living in the stomach of our system of the contemporary world living where I do. It's sort of where the processes go on that sustain, for instance, the major urban centers. These are where the raw resources come from that provide sustenance to people elsewhere. So living in the place where, the, where, it come, where it all comes from is very much living within the body of the global. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a challenging place to inhabit because of the complicity that comes from the truth of, of, our, of our massive needs as humans and, and the forces um, and uh, effect that has on the land. That's a really good question, you know, and it's this uh, great challenge to take on as a novelist at once engaging with contemporary events and also trying to write a work of literature that will survive, certainly. Um, so in terms of commenting on the current uh, politics of Alberta, BC, even Canada, I hope there's a resonance there, but I never wanted to pin this book to contemporary events, which is why I said it in the 2030s. And um, a lot can happen between now and then. And uh, though there has been a political change in Alberta with the Notley win, uh, who's to say what's going to come uh, 20 years from now? She could be the beginning of, for instance, a, a long tenure of socially and environmentally responsible governance in that, in that province, similar to the uh, progressive conservatives that were there for 40 years. Or there could be a big shift, right? Who knows? So I said it in the future, and uh, I think it's in some ways a future I hope we can avoid. I think it certainly uh, can. It can be a bobber in the chaotic currents of the satire we live in day to day, the lived caricature of it all. Um, and I. I kind of think that absurdism becomes realism in an absurdist world. So it's possible that someone will read my book and instead of it being fabulous um, in some sense or satirical, it'll merely be totally realistic. And uh, that'd be a frightening moment. But in some ways, I think um, these various genres can quickly switch to realism as the world so mirrors their absurdity. So I'm going to read um, what begins with an article from a news blog. Bombing No Laughing Matter. This was written in the Trout Source Arts Portal on June 25th, 2037. In art news related to the bombings, an international satellite in free space has managed to perform a language MRI of the pipeline plot, though the location remains scrambled due to Enderby's hazy coordinates. The iterated text translation of the bomber's actions came out as what seems to be prose poetry in the satellite decoder. Gravy to overthrow the cheese curds. 
a radical humor cyber NGO, has posted the poetic interpretations of the industrial sabotage on their decipherment page. Pipe Watch, an industry security watchdog that employs 10,000 pipe observers, recently hired a team of Sorbonne and Harvard-educated poetry scholars to decode the prose poem progression that the satellite scan is picking up. The sequential nature of the poem, said Pipe Watch think tank director Derry Da Bloom, makes the form recall a pipeline itself with a plot that goes through in a gush of symbolism. It is Pipe Watch's hope that this prose poem progression, once interpreted, will mean something, namely the revelation of the bomber's identity and location. Though Derrida Bloom remains mystified about any stable interpretation so far. The anti-hero, as we can tell by the first prose poem in the progression, is attempting to lie still as he or she waits for the moment to strike. Follow this visualized interpretation of the prose poem on the pod view feature located on the Trout Source website, your source for undiluted reality, the wilderness of perception, wellspring of the revivified senses. Sun still sets in Enderby, not orbital thought. Red navigation beacons across on Skyla Ridge to south. Charge in hand, click tiny green light. Hectonitrocubane initialize signaler. Retreat back counting GPS meters away through the animal paths, through the plant paths, through the reptilian to the ancient mind to emerge. Now beating deep heart, press button. Key to ignite, button to blast what is forward. A moment of hesitation. AD 2026, AD 2027, AD 2028. 2037 BCE, bird noise, bird peeps. Left margin to right margin. Calm, future, prison, manacles. Ignition must wait. Retreat. Patrol copter coming. Return on down the stem of the Iron God's flute. The bronze tree's roots. Boreal camouflage. Charyptus ridge to north above quaint sleepy Byzantium. A long wall of survivor lilacs. Three kilometers up ridge. Smile of ancient monks of China. Grimace of sour Christian elect. World inklings, fragrant path into ferment of berries, gorse, and gargantuan leaves of cow parsnip. Know the animal paths back of hand known. Hunch walk over mesa. Moment not precise, off by a nano fraction. No past, no future. Story and fact collated. Twilight between worlds. Pegasus meets moose toward the pipe, the pipe by the north peak of Charyptus Ridge, blue spruce forest Engelman eccentric, above town drenched in prophetic oily shadow, toward the pipe, destroy what is forward. <laughs>